dit. Perfect. Okay, so let's start from the agenda for today. Uh, we'll start with some highlights and novelties, so things that we, we've been working at for, for your gateway. Uh, the topic of the day will be the co-creation of some functionalities. So we have some ideas, new functionalities, but we do want you to participate into the process of design, also to understand which are your, um, if there are any priority, other, other things that we should add uh, to our to-do list. And we have the use case from Nianias. Uh, Nianias is a project that ended, and uh, there will be Eva Shaka, who I don't know if she already joined, in fact. Yes, hello. Oh. Good morning, everybody. Well, nice to meet you all. Thank you. So she will uh, present us the Nianias uh, Space Research Community. And then we, we will save some time for the questions and the answers. Okay, so the highlights. Uh, we have created a new feature for, for you to create your own menu. So uh, by default, your own page only features the menu at the top, which is a kind of predefined uh, list of items. And uh, but we had request in order to add a more personalized menu. So this is what we have done. And you can access that from the manage section, for the, from the administration section of the dashboard. You can select pages and menus, and there you will be able to create your menus. So you can create menu items that uh, link to a page internal uh, of the gateway or to an external page. For example, your own website or your own training materials or uh, any other things that you think your researchers would be interested to. Uh, you can decide to show hide uh, the menu and you can also select the position. So if it's going to be on the left, as in this case here below, or on the right, as in this other case, or in the center. Another thing that uh, we have implemented is the visibility of the curators, because um, currently all the managers or the curators of a dashboard are visible in the curators page as soon as they fill in information about the short biography. So when you add your image, the information about your affiliation. So when you fill in uh, that form in the personal info part, then uh, you are visible. But sometimes you don't want to be visible. Uh, so we implemented this button in order for you to hide. So it's like playing, you know, the <laughs> Alice uh, in Wonderland cat. <laughs> so if I'm invisible, there is no Alessia among the creators, but if I click visible, I am. Uh, some work in progress. Uh, we had some requests from uh, managers of different dashboards in order to provide more uh, advanced uh, configuration uh, for the selection of products from the open air graph that should be included in the gateways. So the first one was the uh, selection criteria specific for fields of science and uh, sustainable development goals. Um, the classification by FOS and SDGs are uh, beta features of our uh, content graph. Um, and currently, it's, it's possible to exploit them uh, for creating uh, your own content for the gateway, but it's not really uh, easy. So we are thinking about something that will enable you to select directly the terms from the controlled vocabularies and their hierarchy. Uh, 
The second feature that was requested was the possibility to select projects and data sources in bulk mode, because now you have to click uh, each data source or each project that uh, is included in your, uh, in your search, which is a little bit tedious. So we will allow to do it in bulk. So you do a search by for uh, by a term, for example, on the project, you you get a list of projects and you can select them all. And then clearly, if there are some uh, false positives in this list, uh, which are not relevant for your community, uh, you can remove it. And that you can do it uh, one by one, because we assume that there will be not a lot of false positives if you select the bulk addition. And finally, the combined selection criteria, what does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, basically what is currently available only on the data source selection, uh, which allows you to create additional filters so that you can say, for example, uh, I want in the gateway everything that comes from HAL, um, which is a repository, uh, but not really everything, only those products uh, whose contributor is Daria. So th that last part, so whose contributor is Daria is only applicable to a specific data source, but we will enable uh, this kind of filters to be uh, applicable to everything, everything that is available in the opener graph. Okay, so the topic of the day, the co-creation uh, of new functionalities. Uh, we had uh, some ideas uh, with the other members of the Open Air team, both technical, uh, but not only the technical team. And uh, we thought about this for, um, uh, let's say, yes, uh, ideas. And we would like to ask you if you have uh, something to propose or if something is really not interesting for you and we should not work on that. Uh, so starting from the gateway pages, uh, currently you cannot create a page from scratch and this is technically currently not possible, uh, but you can edit the pages that are available. So for example, you can change the content of uh, the methodology page, or you can change the content of other pages. Uh, but in fact, you cannot change, uh, for example, the, the title of the page. So what we were thinking is if you need other specific pages to be added so that you can add uh, content in the proper context. For example, uh, there is no page now for you to add uh, the open science practices of your community. So would this be something that you would exploit, that we, you would use, or is there any other page that you would like to, to have in order to add it? Uh, another idea was the Twitter feed. So do you have a Twitter account and would you like to show the tweets uh, from that account or with a, a specific handle uh, in your gateway? And if yes, where we should put this box with a Twitter feed? Uh, then we have some ideas uh, to help you uh, with the engagement with the users of the gateway, which are basically the, the researchers uh, of your community. Uh, because currently um, we don't do basically anything. We completely rely on what you're doing on your side with, you, with your community. But maybe we could send some notifications to the members who subscribed to the gateway, uh, trying you know, to make them come back and be more active. Uh, and using your gateway more than they are doing now. So we could, for example, send uh, notification emails when you as a manager uh, change the configuration or 
um, when we see that there is a high impact publication uh, included in the gateway that was not available before, or we can send a monthly uh, overview of what's happening in the in the community uh, with some numbers like the number of subscribers, the numbers of publications, the numbers of uh, managers that are uh, fine-tuning the gateway and, and so on. And clearly, there could be other ways, so we are open to suggestions on how to support you to engage uh, with the users. And finally, the deposit functionalities. Currently, when you go to the deposit uh, functionality, uh, you can search on all data sources that are available in Open Air. Uh, now, we don't think that this is really useful for the community itself, for a specific communities. And we thought that a, a good idea be that you know which are the repository uh, that are suggested for you, for your community, and you can um, suggest those. So in this way, in the gateway, we could highlight the community-specific repositories, maybe with some comments from you that explain uh, why or how uh, to use this repository for, for the research products. And okay, we can start a small survey with Mentimeter that Julia prepared, and then we can start the the conversation. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so you can go to Mentimeter, uh, menti.com, enter the code, or simply scan the QR code. You can uh, click uh, the hearts or uh, the uh, the tabs up when uh, you are here, so I can see that more people are here. Okay, good. Okay, I'm going to the questions. Okay, from some reason I can't. <laughs> okay, give me a second. I don't know why it's not presenting. Okay, so uh, would you like uh, uh, more pages in the gateway uh, portal, as uh, Alessia suggested? So mm. you like the idea? Yes, it seems. <laughs> okay. So now we want to know which page. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what extra contents do you desire in the gateway? So as I was saying before, we were thinking about one about um, open science, where maybe as open air, we can start with some general guidelines, but then you can uh, fine tune with specific best practice uh, from your communities. Um, but I don't know if you want to to have other pages for um, other things that maybe you do in your projects or in your initiative. Now, oh, let's see. If a gateway gathers input from more than one scientific community, it would be great to display them separately, even manually filtering the result. YouTube channels, ah, for demo video of results or repository of presentations and slides. Knowing, knowing where lists come from would be great. Any filters applied, okay. Uh, general guidelines for beginners. How the gateway can help to authors to make the research outputs more reusable. Okay, guidelines and explanation of regulation. 
relating data to publications would be good. Okay, I mean, the gateway already has the links between publications and data. So I don't know if... Uh, and maybe the suggestion was to have a page where we describe maybe the process, the processes that are used in order to link publications and data. Yeah, the list of institutions is more for the uh, university alliances. Mm -hmm. Okay. Orchid. To add Orchid, this is a little bit vague. If you want so, to speak, feel free to take the microphone. Okay. Also link it in. Okay. Okay, I will move to the other questions. Okay. So here there were some suggestions uh, that uh, we would like you to rate or to click what uh, you would like to have, what is uh, for you uh, of major interest in the web page. So the first option uh, suggests repositories is for the deposit functionality and the guidelines on open science practices is one of the new page that uh, we propose to have. The Twitter feeds, but we should investigate also the LinkedIn uh, indeed. Okay, and the blog items. Okay, any suggestion for new future or contents that you would like? I think somehow they already did in the oh. previous uh, uh, in the previous one. Okay. Well, in any case, if uh, you think uh, even later, let us know even by emailing us. Okay, so here it's more an engagement uh, request. If you need some material that uh, you decide uh, us to produce, like uh, a newslet newsletter or uh, news items for your newsletter, leaflets, template, uh, um, I don't know. So anything that can be helpful for your user engagement activities. Tutorial. Okay. Tutorial for users. Okay. So we already started preparing some uh, mini video tutorials, but they were focusing on the administration functionality. Uh, so probably we should also think about having um, tutorials for for the end users. And this can be done in collaboration with the team of um, the Explore portal as well, because most of the functionalities uh, are in common. Clearly, if you want, let's say, a tutorial branded for, for your gateway uh, specifically, uh, we can do that together. And API, I have to say that we already have them. So if you go on the develop page in your gateway, you will find some basic instruction on how to uh, use the API of OpenAir. And <clears throat> thank you very much for the feedback that you, that you had. Okay, so I think I 
I don't know if there are any questions in the in the chat. Let's check before giving the floor to Eva. Mm -hmm. So yes, there is, there is a question regarding outreach and engagement. Do you maybe have video tutorials on how to use the different functionality of the dashboard for the users and how to link their publications to the gateways? Okay, so yes, this is something that uh, we should work on, as I said. Um, and Irina suggests that Twitter feed uh, would not be a high, high priority now that with many leaving and moving to Mastodon. Huh. Okay, so we should investigate uh, LinkedIn and Mastodon, which I don't know. So uh, it would be interesting to investigate upon. And uh, Joseph suggests to be more transparent to the users about the filters that we are applying. And I agree. Um, and oh, a question from Martin. Hi, Martin. Uh, so we have created about 500 links, uh, but they are not yet visible in the gateway. And um, sometimes uh, this is possible because it requires uh, a little, I mean, all the things that you add via the linking process is added automatically if you imported the publications or data sets from Crossref, Datasite, or ORCID. But if you enrich something that is already in open air, then uh, it, it takes uh, some more time. And this is because we need to merge the new information that you added with the one that we have. And we do this every time we update the content of the open air graph. Uh, but I will check your, your specific case uh, later after this call to see that everything is uh, properly set. Uh, we will try to modify the methodology page, but we don't have access to change it. Uh, this is instead strange and you should be able to do it. So I will take a look at this. Okay, then there was the suggestion to enrich metadata with uh, ORCID information wherever possible. Okay, and we already have an integration with ORCID, which allows you to basically um, tell ORCID that one publication that you found in the gateway is yours. And uh, we are exchanging information with ORCID. So this information goes back and forth in order to reach uh, both the open air graph and the ORCID uh, information. And you can, it's not something that you can add uh, manually. You cannot type your own ORCID, but you can log in with ORCID and in this way, your ORCID profile is linked uh, to the open air profile. And, okay, uh, Joseph asks if we exploit other PID systems, so systems for persistent identifiers in addition to ORCID, like Cloud for Institution. Yes, yes, we do. We use um, ROAR, uh, GRID, uh, and ESNI, and other type of persistent identifiers for organizations. Uh, for the authors, we only support ORCID. Uh, for publications, uh, we support a wide range of PIDs, also based on what is supported by the open air guidelines for uh, the repositories. So DOI, ENDL, uh, PubMed identifiers, and so on and so forth. And I think I went through all the questions. So I think it's time uh, to leave the floor to Eva, who will present the use case uh, for the NEANIAS space research community. 
Uh, Eva Shaka is a researcher at the INAF, uh, which is the Institute on um, Astrophys the National Institute of Astrophysics. Yes, in Italy, <laughs> based in Italy. <laughs> yes. So, Hello, thank you, Alessia. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Alessia and uh, Giulia, for uh, inviting me to this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, yes, my name is Eva Sciacca. I am a researcher at the Italian National Institute for Astrophysics, uh, and I work at the Astrophysical Observatory of Catania. And I will briefly present the Nianias project today with the gateways that we developed within uh, Nianias. I've seen also some people belonging to the project, so maybe they will include the further details. But the uh, Nianias project was uh, funded within the um, uh, EOSC calls related to um, uh, publishing to the EOSC innovative services uh, in different uh, thematic communities. Uh, the project started in uh, uh, November 2019 and just ended October 2020, 22. Um, we have uh, three uh, thematic uh, uh, communities have been involved in Nianias uh, that you can see here, uh, the underwater uh, atmospheric and the space uh, community and me working in the astrophysics field, uh, um, I belong to the space community, uh, leading the related work package um, that uh, um, was aimed at the development of uh, thematic services in the space um, area. So for uh, astrophysicists and the planetary scientists. Um, so um, we have uh, developed uh, these thematic services and exposed them through uh, different channels, let's say. We have onboarded the services to the EOSC, so they are available in the EOSC marketplace, in the EOSC platforms. Uh, but we have also developed our own uh, um, uh, uh, service catalog that is, uh, um, uh, however, uh, compatible with the EOSC portal and can exchange information between uh, the NNES catalog and the EOSC portal. Uh, but we have also developed some um, uh, portals to collect our results and uh, also showcase to the community our results, our publications and the data employed. Uh, at the first attempt, let's say the beginning of the project, uh, we as the space community, um, uh, we have decided to develop our own uh, thematic portal to collect all the information related to the space community. Uh, in this portal, we have collected all the links to join the, um, the services, uh, but we have also linked uh, to uh, some uh, platforms such as the, the Twitter from the Nianias channel, from the Nianias project. And uh, thanks to uh, RSS, we were able to uh, connect to the main Nianias repository uh, to show some blog articles and disseminations articles. Um, um, then, uh, quite... Uh, it was the third year of the project, we started to build our community uh, gateways, uh, one for each of the thematic communities. So you will find one for the atmospheric, one for the underwater and one for the space. And I will show the one that we developed for the space community. Um, you can see here and you can reach it from Nianias minus space openair.eu. And just uh, some days ago, we discovered these new functionalities about the menu. And in our case, it was very important because we wanted to link with, the, of course, the Nianias project website but also we were able to link the three different communities. So if I go to the atmospheric, I can navigate to the atmospheric community. Um, I can go back to the space community. 
And in this uh, portal, we were able to expose and to show which are the main subjects we work on uh, and the services that we developed uh, in which area you can use them. So we have identified them through the uh, subjects list, but we have used, of course, this, um, the summary that is the main page of the gateway uh, to expose our services so that uh, is um, much easier easier to reach these services and the related documentation and to use them. Um, as uh, supporting organizations, we have included open air, but we have included all the organizations that are members of the work page related to the space services. Um, also, what I can show is that uh, uh, these are, yes, the curators, and I think this is a new uh, functionality. And uh, we connected uh, uh, our page not only with the Nianias uh, project, that is the main driver, but with other uh, European projects uh, uh, where uh, our services are being employed. For example, Ecogal, Escape, and Via Lattea. Um, and then we have also used the links to Zenodo communities, and especially we are linked to the Zenodo community uh, that has been created uh, for um, the DNS project. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not very much populated. Uh, this is uh, just uh, one entry, and Cristobal Bordio is linked in the call, so he can say something more about this upload. But this was a great opportunity to uh, promote this uh, latest result from Nianias, uh, that is also a gold open access publication, and to access the data that uh, have been used for, uh, for this publication. Uh, that has been published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. Uh, so this is basically all. I'm uh, very open for your questions or uh, any um, curiosity about how we uh, developed some, something on the gateway. I have to say that uh, I, we couldn't... Um, um, have much effort on these gateways because we developed uh, nearly uh, during the mid of the third years. So we were going to close the project, but uh, I believe that we will we'll still have time to reach with the new functionalities, these uh, gateways. So uh, feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, uh, I know in the call there is Cristobal, that is another project curator for the space, but maybe if there are curators from the other two um, areas, from the atmospheric and underwater, please uh, feel free to add any additional details that I, I may have missed. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Thank you very much for this presentation. So let me check if there is any question on the chat. Okay, seems this is not the case. So since we have uh, some more time for questions, I would like to ask you one. Um, so what do you think uh, that was the uh, more complex uh, activity to do uh, to set up your gateway. Okay, I have to say that the maybe the most complex activity and maybe something that needs to, to be reviewed uh, is the filtering on the selection of the publications. Because as you can see in our gateway, we are working in areas that are transversal all around the uh, different communities. So for example, if we add a subject, uh, machine learning or deep learning, we get um, many thousands of publications that are not related to uh, space. So neither to astrophysics or planetary science or astronomy in general. Uh, 
So in this case, we had to uh, change or add additional uh, um, tags. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, we have also put uh, at the beginning image processing that was quite vast and uh, broad <laughs> uh, subject. So we put astronomical image processing. Uh, the same for, for uh, machine learning, astronomical machine learning. So if it would be possible to add complex relations between the tags um, with the logics, <laughs> some logics uh, mm -hmm. and or and uh, uh, some more complex filtering um, would be of help. The same for the data, because we discovered in the data uh, some data set that have nothing uh, in in, um, in interest in, in our community. Yeah, so, so I think that you will be discovered. Yes, uh, one of the uh, one of the managers who will benefit from the new new feature of complex criteria. Yes. that we are working on. Uh, yes, one of yes, the yes, working progress uh, uh, functionality. Thanks. Okay, and there is a question on the chat from Matei. Matei, would you like to speak? What is the relation between the services and the gateway? Yeah, if I got it right, um, uh, because when I on the on the on your uh, on the gateway and I clicked on the services you talked about, then I get to this catalog of services, which is a separate thing, right? Or yes, yes, just, it's yeah, a separate okay. one. So it's just a link. Yes, you are mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the services are apart, they are running different uh, computing infrastructures and mm -hmm. developed within a different um, environment. So within mm -hmm. Genius, they are running on a cloud that is the GAR cloud. Uh, but um, yeah. okay. Makes just sense. to make uh, uh, links from there is a way also to make uh, visible our work we have done. Also Absolutely. because in the project we had a very high KPI on users reaching. We had to reach about 1,800 users. <laughs> uh, so we had to promote uh, as much as possible uh, the services to gather more users. And of course, we have also published many, many results on uh, scientific publications uh, in both area of astronomy, planetary science, computer science, uh, uh, machine learning. So this way was also to collect material and maybe find uh, uh, related works that uh, were related to our uh, studies. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. And then if I may, then a, a kind of a follow-up question would be, and I probably would rather go to Alessia, uh, is, um, I mean, in EOSC portal, uh, there is the, the research products plus services are, so course, services are kind of one of the resource types that are being presented, uh, here, here not, and but in the sense of in exactly of this interlinking and kind of saying that in these publications, we use, we use this service, uh, and this data set was created by this service. I wonder if have there been, been any considerations on, on the kind of question of what to do with services or representing them there or? Uh, yes, thanks for the question. So the, all the work to introduce uh, the concept of services in the open air graph uh, is, is ongoing and we are doing it we are doing this in the context of the uh, project called EOSC Future. So basically we already have um, an open air portal that shows the services and the EOSC portal is one of the sources from which we collect the information. Uh, on the other hand, we, we have to exploit on how to link the research outputs to the service which is the most important things, apart from the dissemination of the existence of the service, clearly. And um, our uh, text mining team already made some experiments on this. Uh, but yes, these experiments were, yes, it's complicated. And the experiments were run uh, when there were very few services registered in the EOSC portal. So we didn't have many mm. examples in order to mm. understand, for example, how the publications 
uh, refer to the service because they are not acknowledged as a project, for example. Very difficult, yes. Mm. Uh, so I can only say that it's a work okay. in progress. It's a work in progress. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. But of course, this uh, may be very interesting. Um, so you know and you are acknowledged uh, as a service provider, let's say, for the results, the scientific results that come out from the service. Yes. In fact, we have been working with um, <clears throat> several research infrastructures, which have a connect gateway. And, um, and in that case, they do not want to have a portal with all the publications, all the products about a specific uh, scientific domain, but they only want those that have been produced thanks to the infrastructure and thanks to the services that are provided by the infrastructure. And um, in that case, we are, in some cases, we are able, for example, to understand which are the publications that uh, describe results uh, which were produced thanks to one of their services, but in other cases, uh, we cannot, because it really depends on the community you work with and which are the practices that they use. And also in some cases, uh, for example, with the RISIS community, which is the um, uh, innovation and science policy uh, research infrastructure, uh, it was very easy for some data sets and services, and it was very hard for others. Uh, so for example, it is more easy to understand uh, which are the publications related to the CWTS data set, but it was very hard to find those that were related to Cheetah, which is another one that they have. So even inside the same community, there were very different use cases to be to be addressed. So this is still a challenge. Maybe there should be a simple mechanism uh, related to, such as we do with the OI to cite uh, other papers. <laughs> Uh, so to assign, uh, I know maybe di difficult to assign DOIs to services because they evolve quite quickly. But I don't know, so something may maybe related to the USC portal, just assigning a persistent identifier at least for, for the portal. Then the service is another thing because it's an evolving, an, an evolving software. So are there any other comments or questions? So I think this is not the case. So Julia, would you like to add anything else before we close? Um. No, I, I really like to thank you for the inputs that you have given to me. And um, uh, if you if you have some ideas specifically to start working on a template for left leads or uh, um, tutorials, please let me know. Ah, okay, Mat Matteo. Sorry, Matteo. I didn't want to this. Uh, I just, no, 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 go ahead. No. Okay, go ahead. I would still have one question using the opportunity that we are here. Um, uh, I, I would like to understand better. So the relation between the EOS portal or EOS catalog and open air, I mean, it seems it's quite obvious that it's the same. I understand that it's the same technology behind it. Um, but are, so are they completely different? The threads and partly the data is overlapping as well, right? And the data and the kind of sources where the data is coming from. So I would be under, like to understand how the two relate to each other or not at all. Uh, okay, no, yes, they are related. So uh, in the EOS portal started and uh, it only had services. In the open air graph, you can find uh, research outputs but not the services. 
So what we did is that we included the services in the open air research graph and we create, uh, we developed the EOSC explore portal that shows everything that we had in the graph plus the services from the EOSC port. Uh, but one of the tasks in EOSC future was to have um, an EOSC research product catalog. So instead of building everything from scratch again and re-aggregate everything uh, as Open Air was already doing, uh, it was decided that um, the EOSC research product catalog could be based on the content of the open air graph. So what we do is that um, we select from the open air graph, the products that are relevant for the EOSC, and we provide this information to um, the team who's creating the portal and the, the index the service catalog. that is mm -hmm. beyond that, yes. Okay. And so basically it's really downstream. So from the open air research graph, there is some set of rules that select a subset of the data that is passed on to the EOS resource catalog. Exactly. And yes. there it is kind of re indexed separately in some other system. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. Okay. Thank you. And this, these rules of kind of the selection, the, 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 the filter, how is that defined? Uh, for now, uh, we include everything that comes Based. from repositories or data sources in general that are registered in the Okay, ESC. yeah, okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you, cool. Then maybe we can expand when we have the link uh, between products and services, maybe we should add also those products that are linked to services registered in the ESC, but this is yet to come. Uh, I would have one more question. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> uh, but maybe it's just my ignorance. Uh, I was wondering, how is it in the in the dashboard of the of the kind of community uh, or somewhere else? Do I have the option to see the usage or how many people how people use individual or how many clicks views individual resources have or uh, how often kind of is this used actually? So the. It, you have uh, some information. I can share my screen. Okay. Let me go to a bit. We have, but I don't know, Neonius. Neonius space. It's the gateway for today. So let's try this one. So if you open a publication, I will take one for uh, by chance. Uh, we should see if there are uh, some information about the usage. So maybe so that should be publicly available unlucky. next to the. Yes, because I mean. Okay, I was, I was thinking. Okay, here it is. Mm -hmm. uh, these these are, for example, uh -huh. the tweets. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we also have information about um, the download and the views oh, yeah. okay. based on the mm -hmm. usage counts uh, service. Um, okay, and this publicly and available information on the level of the resource, so to say. So this yes. not, I don't have this. Okay, I was wondering something kind of from the point of view of the dashboard, yeah, if I could have come aggregated statistics of so how many, uh, but probably mm -hmm. that's... Okay. Well, that's interesting. So it's something that I will write down. Mm -hmm. But okay, thank you. This is already yeah. helpful to know. And now I stop, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we are here for, <laughs> for questions and for uh, clarifications. So this is why we, we want to organize this community course. So thank you for your interest and your questions. Thank you for the great work. So the next uh, community call will be uh, in March. Uh, there is already uh, the, um, the next call written on the 31st of March at the same time. So from 12 to 13, and uh, we will present the new novelties and uh, uh, another community call. Um, 
so at the moment I'm uh, writing uh, you email uh, one gateway uh, per gateway, but uh, uh, I will try to make uh, another uh, uh, mailing list if it's uh, not a problem for you. Uh, in a way that that we are trying to be all together and that we can uh, we can talk. In any case, feel free to contact me and Alessia if you have either technical problems or you would like uh, to have more uh, outreach and engagement for your uh, specific uh, gateway. And if you would like to have uh, some kind of material or do you want to start with us, the tutorial for uh, users. And uh, Alessia. Yes, thank you, Julia. And thank you all for being here today. And I wish you all a great day and uh, talk soon.